The legacy of H.P. Lovecraft as a horror writer is one that is vast and scary. Lovecraft is often known as the master of weird fiction. He based his personal philosophy and writings on the idea of cosmicism, which propounds that humanity is simply an insignificant part of the universe. His genius mind created several uniquely terrifying entities that have lived on for so many years after his passing. And Wilbur Waitley is another of his demented creations. Waitley most famously appeared in Lovecraft's horror short The Dunwich Horror and scared the socks off people. Today's video will explore all known versions of Wilbur to appear in fiction so far and dive deep into the depths of this mysterious entity and his life. Interested? Keep watching. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. The Dunwich Horror, a fine Lovecraftian story, introduces another insane Lovecraftian entity. The Dunwich Horror is a terrifying story about the power of the outer gods, their creations, and the havoc they can wreak on humans. The primary antagonistic race in the Cthulhu mythos is called the Outer Gods. They are the most formidable characters in H.P. Lovecraft's stories and are to the Great Old Ones what mankind is to the latter. The story revolves around Wilbur Waitley, a half-human, half-god born under mysterious circumstances in the isolated village of Dunwich in Massachusetts. Lavinia Waitley and an unidentified male were the parents of Wilbur Waitley, an albino who was malformed and unstable. Later, it was disclosed that Yog sothoth was the one who had fathered Wilbur. A cosmic being and outer god, yogg sothoth is the parent of Cthulhu, Hastur, the unspeakable, and the Vurmi. He was born in the nameless mist, and he is Wilbur Waitley's father as well. yogg sothoth is said to be omniscient and confined outside the cosmos, which implies he can observe all of the space-time at once and that nothing is hidden from him. This is strongly hinted at, if not explicitly stated. Yog sothoth is frequently enlisted to keep mortals carrying out cult activities or rituals. He goes by the names of the Gate or the Lurker at the Threshold. Thus, he is mighty and fathered Wilbur to use him to release the Great Old Ones back onto Earth so that they can destroy all life and rule over the remains of the planet. In the story, Wilbur's birth and early years are surrounded by odd occurrences. Further, he develops unusually quickly, turning into a man within a decade, making it apparent to people that he is definitely not a regular human. Because of his repulsive look and an abnormal alien odour flowing from his body, the locals avoided him and his family. His grandfather, a master of the dark arts, known only as Old Waitley, trains him to follow certain sinister rites and teaches him the dark arts of witchcraft and black magic over this time. Locals then start to become wary of Old Waitley when he can continues to buy more and more cattle, but his herd never expands, and the cattle in his area inexplicably develop major open wounds. It turns out that something is lurking within the Waitley home. The unseen thing that Wilbur and Old Waitley have imprisoned at their farmhouse is linked in some way to Wilbur's father, a horrifying Lovecraftian entity known as Yog sothoth the two men thus frequently alter the farmhouse as the creature expands to terrible proportions year after year. People also start to detect a pattern of inexplicable cow disappearances. When Old Waitley finally passes away, Wilbur's mother, Lavinia, vanishes not long after. The enormous thing ultimately takes over the farmhouse's entire interior, and Wilbur is left all alone to deal with whatever is lurking within the walls of his farmhouse. To finish the goal he had been brought up to achieve, Wilbur travels to Miskatonic University in Arkham to obtain a copy of the Necronomicon, since it is the one of the few libraries in the world to have an original. 
Wilbur believes that he can call the Old Ones using the Necronomicon's spells. Still, the copy of the book that was in possession of his family is tattered and missing the specific page that contains the spells and incantations he needs to unlock the door. Wilbur breaks into the library at night to steal it after the librarian, Dr. Henry Armitage, refuses to give him access to the university's copy. A guard dog strikes Wilbur with remarkable violence and ends up fatally wounding and killing him after becoming enraged by his strange body odor. Warren Rice and Francis Moore Morgan, two additional professors, and Armitage reach the library just as Wilbur's partially human corpse begins to dissolve and, in the end, completely melts away, leaving behind no residue. He was only 15 years old, despite looking like a full-grown monstrous creature during his death. However, this is not the end of the story. The townspeople had conveniently forgotten about one thing, the evil lurking within the Waitley house. No one pays attention to the unexplained presence rising in the Wakeley farmhouse now that Wilbur is dead. Having no one to cater to it, the beast keeps growing until one day it bursts out of the farmhouse. A beast, the gigantic invisible monstrosity, then rampages through Dunwich early one morning, leaving enormous footprints the size of massive tree trunks in its wake. The beast eventually ventures into settlements to the horror of the townspeople, before Armitage, Rice and Morgan show up with the information and tools necessary to kill the monster. However, the unseen beast terrorizes Dunwich for several days, claiming the lives of two families and numerous police officers. A magic substance is then used to temporarily make the monster visible, which causes one crew member to experience a shock as he sees the beast. It blathers in an alien tongue before pleading in English with its father, Yog sothoth for assistance moments before the spell annihilates it, leaving behind a sizable scorched area in its wake. Thus, the story reveals at the very end that this monstrous creature, unseen to the human eye, was actually the twin brother of Wilbur. He resembled their father, Yog sothoth physically much more than the part human Wilbur did. Further, he was more diabolical than Wilbur and he was always in fear of his monstrous twin. The story gave us the complex character of Wilbur Waitley. In some ways, Lovecraft's Wilbur Waitley is an autobiographical character by Lovecraft. Wilbur's upbringing by his grandfather rather than a father, his schooling at home using the library of his grandfather, his deranged mother, his stigma of ugliness, which in Lovecraft case was a self-image imposed upon him by his mother and his sense of alienation all mimic Lovecraft. What was Wilbur Waitley like? Coming to his appearance, he was able to disguise himself as a human while growing up. However, underneath his disguise lurked a horrifying monster. Wilbur is characterized as being extraordinarily hideous and having an unsettling appearance and aura of wickedness. He always wore loose clothing that carefully hid every inch of his body to cloak his inhuman physiology. He also constantly emits a foul odor, a trait of his paternal family. After birth, Earth, he begins growing at an alarming rate, and he continued to grow until he was at a towering height of nine feet tall. Although he lacked a chin like his mother and grandfather, he had an intense, precociously formed nose that complemented the look of his big, dark, almost Latin eyes to give him an appearance of brilliance that was almost otherworldly. His big lips, huge pores, yellowish complexion, coarse, wavy hair, and curiously extended ears also had a goat-like or animalistic appearance. He was undoubtedly a hybrid, as evidenced by his very human-like hands and head, and the Waitley's distinctive mark could be seen on his goat-like chinless face. However, the torso and lower body were teratologically fantastic, making it possible for him to only have survived on Earth with the use of ample baggy clothing to cover the same. His chest was covered in an alligator or crocodile's reticulated leathery skin. His back was piebald with black and yellow markings and faintly resembled some snake's squamous coat. The worst part Part, though was what lurked below the waist, where all resemblance to humans ended and pure phantasm began. The epidermis was heavily coated with rough black hair and numerous long greenish-gray tentacles with scarlet sucking lips protruded awkwardly from the abdomen. 
Their layout was strange and appeared to adhere to the symmetry of a cosmic geometry that neither the Earth nor the solar system was aware of. What appeared to be a primitive eye was deep set on each hip and had a pinkish ciliated orbit. Instead of a tail, there was a trunk of a tree or feeler with purple circular patterns and several signs that it was a mouth or throat used for drawing blood as per speculation. The limbs ended in ridged, veined pads that weren't hooves or claws and, save from their black hair, roughly looked like the hind legs of huge saurians from prehistoric Earth. Another indication of his non-human physiology is seen as Wilbur's body wears away quickly once he passes away, leaving just a pale mass of what seems like ash on the flooring. Hence, he was positively unsettling and downright diabolical to look at. It was clear that he was not a creature of this earth. To complement his grotesque appearance, he also had a peculiar and weird personality. We already know that Wilbur was not human. Half human, half god, he was as callous and heartless as his grandfather. Via its personality, it is clear that Wilbur Waitley sees people as little more than pests. He is widely despised and dreaded by the majority of the populace, as well as animals, particularly dogs who undoubtedly smell the evil within him. Additionally, it is suggested that he murders innocent people who stand in his way, doing whatever it takes to fulfill the goal he was born for. People in the town also blame him for the passing of his mother, who was, according to them, either sacrificed or killed when she protested against his evil ambitions. Wilbur is further well-versed in black magic and approaches his objectives with a tenacious obsession. Only his late grandfather and teacher had some sort of control over him. Other than that, he listens to no one. He has a certain amount of connection with his twin brother. However, he is also scared of him. His motivation comes from this terror and his resolve to fulfill his goals no matter the costs. Wilbur Waitley in the first Dunwich horror movie adaptation. Dean Stockwell and Ed Begley started in Daniel Haller's 1970 American supernatural horror film The Dunwich Horror. Wilbur Waitley was portrayed in the film by Robert Dean Stockwell, an American actor whose career spanned seven decades. Stockwell was an acclaimed actor who had also won the Golden Globe along with the Best Actor Award at Cannes during his acting career. While critics were divided in their review of him, Stockwell's acting was appreciated by many. In the movie, a beautiful young graduate student is the target of a man, later revealed to be Wilbur Waitley, who wants to exploit her by using her in a Necronomicon-inspired occult ceremony. It is, at best, a loose version of the H.P. Lovecraft short story. The movie begins with the birth of the unearthly twins, Wilbur and his monstrous brother. The scene then cuts to the present day, where the plot of the movie takes place. The story is primarily set around Dr. Henry Armitage, a professor at the Miskatonic University in Arkham, Massachusetts, and a student in his class, Nancy Wagner. After delivering a lecture about an ancient occult book called the Necronomicon, he entrusts his student, Nancy, with the book, asking her to safely deliver it back to the university library where it is housed. However, on her way there, a stranger follows her and subsequently identifies himself as none other than Wilbur Waitley. He wants to see the book, and even though it is closing time and the book is allegedly the sole copy in the world, making it practically priceless, Nancy agrees to Wilbur's request because he uses a hypnotic power on her. However, Armitage, who has done extensive study into the murky background of Wilbur's family, interrupts Wilbur as he reads the book. After encountering Wilbur, he warns Nancy about him and his dark family, but the young girl decides to ignore him. She goes as far as to drive him home when he says that he missed the last bus. Little did she know that this would be a grave mistake. After she drives him home, he invites her in, and there she meets Wilbur's grandfather, Old Waitley, who in the original story was a sorcerer and master of the dark arts, including occult rituals and black magic. Her car is then disabled by Wilbur, who further drugs Nancy in an effort to keep her there and use her for the occult ritual. Under the effects of narcotics and hypnosis, she decides to stay the weekend at the Waitley house,
house and she sticks with her decision even when Nancy's classmate Elizabeth and Dr. Henry Armitage come all the way from Arkham the next morning in search of her. But they refuse to leave Nancy behind since Armitage is aware of the dubious reputation of the Waitleys. Further investigation reveals that Lavinia, Wilbur's mother, is still alive and in an asylum. Armitage is also informed by Dr. Corey, the local doctor, that Lavinia gave birth to twins when Wilbur was born, but one of them was stillborn. He never saw the body because he wasn't present for the delivery and apparently Lavinia lost her mind and almost passed away during the difficult labor. Elizabeth searches for Nancy within the Waitley home as Armitage conducts his investigation. She follows the advice of their neighbors since the entire community dislikes the Waitleys and is suspicious of them and breaks into the home. During her search, she unlocks a locked door inside the house, allowing what appears to be Wilbur's monstrous twin to escape. The entity breaks free and kills her in cold blood. Later, Old Waitley questions Wilbur and Nancy and unfortunately they get into a terrible fight during which the old man falls down the stairs and dies. Thus, Wilbur is left alone to deal with his twin. However, he is hell-bent on completing his ritual to bring back the old ones so that they can take over the earth and thus his twin rampages unchecked. Getting a taste of freedom, the monstrous twin runs free and kills everything that it sees. Multiple people are killed in Dunwich when Wilbur's brother runs amok. A string of tragedies follows as Lavinia, the twin's mother, also passes away in the asylum. Further, a fire that may have been caused by a pagan rite destroys the Waitley estate as well. However, this does not deter Wilbur from achieving his goal. Wilbur gets Nancy ready for sacrifice at the top of a coastal cliff in order to bring back what he refers to as the Old Ones. When Armitage finally confronts him, Wilbur chants and summons his demon father while Armitage tries to combat it by using reversing spells. During the rite, Wilbur is suddenly struck by lightning and falls into the water as he goes up in flames. This also seals the rite and kills his twin, the Dunwich Horror, as well. With Wilbur dead, the old ones aren't able to come to Earth. Thus, Armitage saves the day with his knowledge of the occult. Armitage and Corey finally lead the physically unscathed Nancy away from the altar of sacrifice, reassuring her that the Waitley bloodline has come to an end with the death of all the members. However, the film ends on a chilling note. And this is the place that the film greatly distinguishes itself from the short story. They show that Nancy is pregnant and the most likely father, you guessed it, Wilbur Waitley. Thus, in this iteration, Wilbur is seen manipulating and hypnotizing people along with using others as pawns in his larger plan. One notable distinction is how Wilbur is portrayed. While he is characterized in the original story as goatish and uncharismatic, in the movie, he appears sensuous and attractive. Further, we also encounter Lavinia and Old Waitley in the film. The movie puts a modern twist on the tale and can be considered a strong attempt to adapt Lovecraft for the big screen. Jeffrey Combs played the role in the 2008 movie The Dunwich Horror. The story of Wilbur Waitley and his evil pursuit for a copy of the Necronomicon, an old evil book that will aid him in opening a doorway to a realm inhabited by incomprehensible beings known as the Old Ones, is told in the H.P. Lovecraft adaptation Dunwich Horror. The tale again closely draws from the original short story as the central plot revolves around Wilbur and his quest to bring back the old ones. However, the circumstances of the story are completely different and the film embraces more traditional horror elements such as exorcisms and priests in the mix along with the existence of a weird cult known as the Black Brotherhood. The movie opens with the birth of the twins and it acts as an ominous message for the horrors that are about to follow. The movie's second scene shows a typical exorcism of a young girl. Father Hoadley, the one conducting the exorcism, exits the room looking visibly defeated by the procedure. 
Father Endelaide, his assistant, attempts to help, but is immediately discouraged by the senior priest since he considers this one to be a lost cause. Professor Faye Morgan and Dr. Henry Armitage arrive and take control of the exorcism immediately. They perform a successful exorcism and find a ritual pyramid hidden beneath the girl's room's flooring. The two ultimately learn that Caitlin's possession was caused by a gateway left open between our realm and a planet inhabited by ancient gods known as the Old Ones. They need to locate the Necronomicon, or more specifically, page 175 of it, as all the translations that are currently accessible are missing that particular page. They recruit Walter Rice, another university professor, to assist them in finding it. However, Wilbur is also on the hunt for that specific page, and thus it turns into a race of who can find it first. Dr. Henry Armitage and his group of historians who have pledged to defend the book oppose Wilbur, who is being driven by his sorcerous uncle and a beast of the greatest evil living in their farmhouse. The guardians of the ancient book race against time across unfathomable realms in pursuit of the coveted page that contains the incantations to open the gateway. However, Waitley manages to get his hands on the page first, and this forces Armitage and his colleagues to either fight the evil Yog sothoth and shut the door or let mankind suffer the drastic consequences. The Dunwich Horror is an excellent addition to the Lovecraft filmography, as well as a respectable horror movie in and of itself. The role of Wilbur Waitley is masterfully played by horror acting veteran Jeffrey Combs, who pulls out the unnerving character with conviction. The seductive and alluring character seen in the first movie was changed to showcase the character's unnerving and scary side that Lovecraft's short story embodies. Further, in a cool twist, Dean Stockwell, who had played Wilbur in the 1970 Dunwich Horror movie, plays Dr. Henry Armitage in this one, bringing him full circle as he plays the hero this time. What makes Wilbur such a unique Lovecraftian entity? Since Wilbur is neither a unique non-human species nor is he a human, it makes him a pretty unusual character in the mythos literature. He can be likened to a strange chimera, combining human and extremely alien forms in both biology and appearance. While he is never depicted as having any unique powers, the film adaptations suggest that Wilbur possessed some otherworldly powers, such as being able to hypnotize people, as he did with Nancy. Apart from this, it is evident that he isn't at par with the other evil cosmic entities that Lovecraft has created. He is instead a servant, a being brought to life for one purpose only, opening the passage for the old ones. Wilbur Waitley and the story of the Dunwich Horror is widely acclaimed and has become a cornerstone as far as Lovecraft mythos is concerned. The character has also been brought to life on screen, which has made it easier for fans to see and imagine what he would look like in our world. What do you think about this character? Does this concept of a Dunwich Horror lurking in a sleepy small town scare you? Tell us in the comment section below. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks, everyone.